standing in the middle of the Neon Museum Boneyard. It's a very interesting place, right in the heart of downtown Las Vegas. The Boneyard actually existed because it was the repository for Young Electric Sign Company. Whenever they took down an old sign, this was where they deposited it. So they put it here so it died. And then about 20 years ago, some visionaries thought, hey, you know what? We really ought to preserve these signs and make them available for the people to see because they truly reflect the history of Las Vegas. You know, neon has a fascinating history. It got started in the late 1800s, and neon was really a scientific achievement where they realized how different gases reflected different colors when electrical charges went through them. But no place in the world has anybody celebrated neon the way Las Vegas has. And that's why the Boneyard really stands out as an iconic museum of an incredible history of design, architecture, color, and art. Las Vegas is known for blowing up its building, reinventing itself. In many cases, these signs are all that's left of the historic places that made Las Vegas what it is today. Beyond the fact that they're really aesthetically stunning and architecturally wonderful. So let's take a stroll. Behind me we have the wonderful Moulin Rouge sign. The Moulin Rouge is a really historic building for Las Vegas and what's very interesting is the sign was moved here just about a month ago and by a strange coincidence the Moulin Rouge, what was left of it, burned to the ground. So this is all that is left of this wonderful historic building. The designer of this sign was a woman named Betty Willis, who was one of the in-house designers for Young Electric Sign Company. You might know her because she's the woman who designed the famous Welcome to Las Vegas sign. The Moulin Rouge sign was her absolute favorite. She poured her heart and soul into it. And when you saw it lit up with the wonderful pink neon glow, it was a truly amazing sign. Surrounding me is the remnants of the old Stardust sign. This sign dates back to the 1970s. It replaced an earlier sign that was about the same scale. I love this sign for a couple of reasons. One, when you're looking at these signs on the strip, you don't realize how massive they are because they're designed to be looked at from street level and from a distance. And I think that's what fascinates people is that when then you get up close to these, they're absolutely huge. The other thing that I like about this sign is that it really represents what signage did for a lot of properties. They hid them. In back of the Stardust Hotel, or in the, of the sign, were simply four rows of motel buildings. They needed something to hide it because it really didn't look very good. So they built a 300 yard long sign to be the facade and it created a false front that actually hid what the property looked like in back. You know, this is a really small sign and to some it doesn't really look significant, but it's one of my favorite signs. First of all, this sign dates back to the 1930s, and it really represents that in the Neon Boneyard, there are signs that represent every decade. This is a sign that is really reminiscent of the era of the 1940s, the old golden nugget. It's fascinating for a variety of reasons, not just because of the design and because of the color, but also this was one of the beginning instances of where neon signs actually became part of the architecture of the building. Robert Venturi wrote a seminal book called Learning from Las Vegas on how the signage of Las Vegas was really part of the architectural design. The golden nugget was a huge blazon of color and a blazon of light in downtown Las Vegas. I can remember, you know, we would cruise down Fremont Street uh, back in the 1960s and 1970s, and you didn't need to have the lights of the car on because all of the neon surrounding you just lit the street up so brilliantly. Another example of how massive these signs are is it's so massive, the skull from the original Treasure Island sign dating back to about the mid-1980s. From GoogleEarth.com, that satellite, you can actually zoom down and see the face of this skull looking right back at you. It's pretty scary. One of the great things about Neon in Las Vegas is that it wasn't just for hotel and casino use. We had so many wonderful artists and designers who did these signs that other businesses took advantage of them also. One of my favorites is the Lucky Duck, which was the sign for the Lucky Duck used car lot. So how many car lots around the country can have a sign that's this beautiful, this ornate, sitting on top of a used car lot? That's Vegas, baby.